And so please describe to me what the aesthetic look is exactly. More like this guy here. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we'll go ahead and bring Oh, wow, you really have to come in here? Is this, no, what, is this really happening? He, he met the other guy behind you, bro. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I'm right into that bad boy. You can stay right there, behind the camera. <laughs> behind the camera. No, see, now that you got me jealous now. That's okay. That's not no, fair. You're, you're born in the category like the uh, Ruth Arnold, okay? My man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Arnold. Ferrigno. Huh? Okay. okay. Aesthetic. <laughs>
Swedish words were like little toy canes No sting, no hurt, no one, just a bang, bang Right? Is that it's, it? Yeah, it's, it's something like that. Just a bang, Toy bang, guns. rolling off your tongue. <laughs> Toy guns. It's no smoke, no bullets. Water guns. All right. <laughs>
not nothing except for these LED lights and that's it. So I was like, you know what? I need to start sprucing up this room and 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 start putting in put, start putting stuff on the walls. In fact, some people in the chats, you know, part of the posse were sitting there going, "Hey, um yo, you should uh, either get a bigger TV or put something on that put something yeah. on that wall." Yeah, why you got this little TV on the wall like yeah, Who see, hangs a TV that small? It's like this big. I know. So here's the thing. My plan was, uh, my plan behind me, real talk, was going to be shelving, right? Shelving on both sides, right? Man, these wires and stuff is not being my friend today. So, uh, for, so I was planning on having shelving on both sides of the, the TV. And it was going to have a whole bunch of different things on there. But then when I went out to go and try to buy some shelving, this is during... This is during the quarantine, like when people really were quarantined. I don't know what happened, but everybody seemed to be wanting to start ho doing home improvements. So yeah. everything that I wanted to look, everything that I wanted to buy, which were which were like um, uh, floating de uh, floating uh, floating shelves and all that, all that stuff, gone, literally. So I was just like, you know what, man, I'm good on it, y'all. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. I'll wait for the right time, but let me at least hang this TV because I had different plans with the TV in the back. But then mm -hmm. I realized that this TV, I mean, you know, this is this this is what happens when you when you make mistakes. TV too damn small because yeah. my head covers it up pretty much. Yes. So pretty much. I'm going to uh, my plan is to get a bigger TV, a much bigger TV, put it on that wall hang some stuff around it. But I'm like, you know what? In the meantime, maybe I could start adding a few things on the wall, you know, put up a painting, put up some other things. Man, Caden, Caden's um, lava lamp, though. Real talk. Caden's lava lamp inspired me. I was like, man, I need to put like a lava lamp over there. Get rid of this ring light. Get that out of here. Put a little, yeah. put a little side, you know, end table over here. Put a lava lamp. Turn that mug on. You feel me? Mm. So to, to add the ambiance, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, you know, the, shout like out to this room. Shout out to my like brilliant kid ever. Yes, <laughs> man. All I'm saying is uh, uh, high key, low key. Like that inspired me big time. And so shout out to the most brilliant nephew ever in the world, Caden. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm actually in the middle of working on right now, which is getting a, a lava lamp and an end table for that area. And uh, right. yeah, so you'll be seeing changes in this on this wall over the course of the week you know what i'm saying i'm gonna be adding things in removing taking things out seeing what works see what seeing what doesn't you know you know what i'm saying good well yeah. i really like it so uh, progress and uh <laughs> and i and i can't get enough of you so seeing you twice is is very nice yeah <laughs> Oh, and by the way, Caden's watching. Huh. Caden is watching right now. By the way, Milky GFX. I, I don't know where he got that name. I from. I don't know I'm either. I'm not even going <laughs> question it. I'm it's not even. Like... Maybe chocolate Milky GFX. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. Uh... Milky GFX sounds more for more for Jack than than for for Caden. But I'll take mm. that. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. It, it's it's a interesting. Why GFX? Of all uh, things. Girlfriend effects? Is that what know. that means? I'll, I'll ask him. <laughs> we, we, can, we can ask him. <laughs> he just see told what me. See what he has to say. See he, where he came up with this. He, he, told me I, he just told me I got a big head. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> just you wait, Caden. <laughs> just you wait. Okay? It's in the blood. That's all I'm saying. It's in the God. blood. Uh, but anyway, uh, so anyway, besides the painting... You guys are doing good, Jack. You doing all right? Yeah, How was your night? Yeah, doing doing well. Got a, you know, an extra big thing of coffee today because I was up a little late last night. So <clears throat> just couldn't, couldn't fall asleep. Too hyped for Friday. So, you mm. know, <laughs> here I am. I feel and, you. But I'm here. <laughs> so that's, that's what counts. <laughs> and, Ed, how are you? Because uh, I also know that you did a – you just recently did a, a, a stream – last night correct God, yeah, what are you online. streaming about <laughs> oh, i play video games so on oh, twitch nice. all so day or day for like 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 five hours i was huh. just like <laughs> and then yeah got angry at call of duty and went and played some else. <laughs> so um lobbies were sweaty yesterday so oh. i just like you know what i'm tired of this 
and went and did something else less stressful. That's what's mm. up. Yeah. Are you one of the guys that like yells at the screen? I was just about playing? to ask that. Um, I don't yell at the screen. I do get noticeably upset though. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was just like, literally, you can see me like my eyes. I'll look up at the ceiling, and I want to throw my controller, but it's a it's an expensive controller, so I don't. <laughs> So, and because Manuska will end my life if I break it. Wow. So, um, yeah, I was playing so bad yesterday that Manuska got more kills than me. That's how I know. That's how bad oh, it dang. was. So, <laughs> she and I play together. Nice. Well, All right. uh, I mean, um, go Manuska. Yeah. <laughs> of course yeah. you cheer her on. Of course. <laughs> of course I would. You crazy? You know what I'm yeah. saying? If you think I'm not going to root for my own sister, my own flesh and blood, you're living under a rock, my brother. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to keep it straight funky with y'all. Hey, it's a comfortable rock to live under, I'm just saying. Like, oh, know, wow. Yeah. Kind of like Patrick's Rock and uh, SpongeBob. Yeah, there we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, get straight nerdy right now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Just SpongeBob. get straight nerdy. <laughs> SpongeBob. Um, but anyway, we got to jump into these uh, a little bit of news because uh, – like I said, uh, there there are some things that we didn't get to talk about yesterday morning that obviously is still continuing to happen. Uh, things are still popping off. Um, but before I do that, good morning, Mr. T12, Tanu Vane, uh, Milky GFX, um, Malia, good day, mate, from Australia. Um, Jacqueline, Christopher on Facebook. Andy, what's up? Good morning. Uh, James, good morning, my, my soldier. What's up? Good morning to the posse and all for those who are starting to pop in and, and come in and have this conversation. I really appreciate it. We definitely got to jump right into the news. So first things first. Well, USPS, the United States Postal Service, is still having some issues right now. Trump has some things to talk about and some things to say in regards to these mail-in ballots. Jack's got the story. Jack, speak on it, bro. So uh, it's continued on so far with the kind of battle between uh, President Trump and the USPS. It, it, for a long time, he's had, you know, a kind of a, I don't know, just a disdain. But he just, for some reason, does not uh, want the Postal Service to be a thriving uh, entity uh, is the way that it seems. And uh so he has come out in an interview uh, on Fox News, and he said that they want three and a half billion dollars for something that they'll turn out to be or that'll turn out to be fraudulent. Fraudulent. That's election money, basically. They want three and a half billion dollars for the mail-in votes, universal mail-in ballots. They want twenty-five billion billion for the post office. Now they need that money in order to make the post office work, so it can take all these millions and millions of ballots. Hmm. So, uh, and then he continued on, uh, of and course saying he did. that, uh, but if they don't get those two items, that means you can't have universal mail-in voting because uh, you, because you, they're not equipped to have it. Oh, uh, because so of you, essentially they're not. He okay. has linked this together, saying that the funding that's being requested for the post office, which has been struggling because of the coronavirus. And being able to have people there and be able to add more people to the workforce, be able to, you know, be able to go to additional hours. Right. There's been a lot of uh, restrictions that have been placed onto the USPS with about overtime uh, and uh, delivery people that are out and about. They have to stop their deliveries at a certain hour. And so, like, things that are supposed to go out that day aren't going out that day. Uh, now there's been, you know, looks into the, I guess, the CEO or the head of the, po the postmaster general uh, and looking into him for fraud. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on within the USPS uh, that are you know, definitely need to be looked at. Uh, yeah. But Trump's linking all the funding that's being requested as just there to be able to get Democratic mail-in votes that he wants to stop. Uh, and he says that, you know, if all the states allow for it, that then there's going to be so much of this fraud, uh, which there's no evidence or facts that have been able to prove that. Um, and, and people say that it's baseless, that he keeps on bringing it up over and over again. Uh, and so, you know, it's going to be a continued thing. But, you know, there's big concerns that if the USPS does allow universal mail-in voting, that with the amount of people that are currently working and the, you know, the workforce that's there, mm -hmm. that, you know, it'll take months to be able to count all the mail-in ballots, if not, 
uh, even longer because then there's going to be lawsuits that are going to be dropped about uh, about fraud and, and this and that. So like it could be years while they're going into legal battles to, to figure out you know exactly what happened with all the mail-in ballots. But I don't know how that can actually affect you know the dates of you know by the time they had to be counted. Um, and I think you mentioned a little bit of, uh, before the show started that some of these states are actually requesting to be able to push back yes. the deadline for mail-in ballots. Uh, so, you know, they, they can only go so far, right? Right. Because there's a specific date that a new president has to be sworn in on uh, or the existing president has to be re-sworn back in. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. What are, your, what are your thoughts on it? Well... Um, the thing is, is okay. So I understand. And, you know, we've had this conversation on, on multiple occasions. Um, and the thing is, is we need the postal service. We need the post office. We need them. You know what I'm saying? They're, they are an essential to how the world runs, you know, and how the, the world turns. Um, we definitely need to most definitely, it's important that we have funding for them so that they can do their job. It has no, I don't think it has anything to do with the mail-in ballots. I think they just need the, the funding so that they can still efficiently run their, their business, run the postal service for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. Now, I, 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 I can see, I can understand, right? I can understand why Trump feels some type of way. I'm not sitting here saying that it's okay for him to just completely stifle and stop funding going to the Postal Service. But I can understand why he feels some type of way about it. Mm -hmm. He's paranoid, understandably. There's a lot of things that he's paranoid about. Let's be real. There's, there's been so many uh, 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 conspiracy theories about pandemic to everything. I mean, just everything for the past freaking six months have been just insane 2020 you know what i'm saying let's get crazy but at the same time postal service is something that we need it's something that we definitely need so cutting them off completely could really mess up a lot of things that can mess up people who are trying to <clears throat> that get things mailed in from 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 other companies i mean other companies that are just used that are are mail um that are uh delivery heavy services as well i mean you you just in, in regards to mail and uh in packages and everything not food but you get what i'm saying you catch my drift it's just mm -hmm. that is something that is needed so if you all of a sudden just cut that completely out it's going to be a cluster blank you blank. know what i mean it's going to could be you ima could you imagine like amazon delivering your mail bruh because they deliver everything else i would, drone. <laughs> honestly i wouldn't be surprised i mean if it and right. if it ends up being this way all because of mail-in ballots he's what you know what i'm saying he's he's willing to stop funding going to you know to help with postal service with the postal service just because of mail-in ballots is insane but i will say this too i am a little concerned as well about the amount of absentee ballots and or mail-in ballots however you want to call it that would be flooding in at the same time and would the postal service be able to handle that especially when they're understaffed and underpaid and then you don't have the funding on top of that too you know what i'm saying the the help the handout so i don't know you know what i'm opening up the phone lines right now I want to hear what you guys think. I'm going to ask Ed what you think, too, here really quick in your opinion. But the phone lines are open right now. Give us a call at 314-766-4581. Uh, again, 314-766-4581. Drop a dime. Let's speak on it. Let me hear your thoughts in regards to this. Ed, what are your thoughts on this real quick? Um, I kind of... I'm kind of like on the side, same side as you. Uh, I kind of agree with uh, that. I understand why he'd be paranoid about that because, I mean, it, you don't know um, people's intentions, a lot of people's intentions that may be working for, like, the post office. I mean, you never know. There could be mail tampering. I'm not saying that that could happen. There could be mail tampering yeah. during that time. It's like, oh, it's election time? Yeah, let me mm -hmm. go through these ballots that I'm, I'm supposed to be, that we're supposed to be sorting. 
I'm about to like, oh, yeah, this one, no, that one's Republican, that one's Republican, and, and get rid of him. So I can un- completely understand. Like, he has a valid, uh, valid gripe as to uh, why he's worried, um, which is crazy for me to say because I never agree with anything he says. But facts. I understand why he he's taking issue with uh, the postal, United States Postal Service and these mail-in ba- ballots. So it's it'll be interesting to see, like, what – comes of this because i mean will we even be able to like will we be at a point in november where we'll be able to go to the polls and this doesn't even matter Mm. or will this matter well here's the thing though there will be people that will be able to walk into to a, a voting place and 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 cast their vote you know what i'm saying um but hold on we do have a phone call I think Thanks. I know who this is. Hold up. Oh, man. my! F- Come on. Technical issues. Hold on. Ah. Oh. Literally. What the hell? Okay. That just happened. Okay. Um, whoever just tried calling, please try calling again. Uh, I am sorry. I am. This is like the... Wow. Okay. It's back to normal again. I don't know what happened to my mouse. My mouse completely just freaked out on me. Um, so whoever just tried calling, please try calling again. But ah, there we go. Let's do this. Hey, you're on the mic with the Pascal show. What's your name and where are you calling from? What's up, Pascal? Hey, enemy. What's up, man? How you doing, what brother? Up? Can you hear us? So- yeah, I can hear you. Okay. What's up, man? You you on the you on the mic. What's up? Speak on it, brother. Uh, oh yeah. Well, I mean, um I think you don't think Trump has a legitimate right about the post office. Say that again? You're breaking up. What did you say? I say you don't you don't think Trump has a legitimate gripe about the post office and million ballots? Oh no no no! I mean that's what we just said. I understand why he has that that uh, that concern. I totally understand that concern. Absolutely. You know he's been talking about the post office. Uh, he was talking about the post office before he got elected. Matter mm-hmm. of fact, you can talk. You can you can probably YouTube uh, Trump Amazon. You can probably just YouTube that. And every time he talks about Amazon, he's he's mad because. The post office only loses money. It never makes money. It hasn't made money in years. Mm-hmm. And we have to have it because it's in Article One of the Constitution. You know what I'm saying? So we have to have a post office. But it's not profitable. So every every year the post office loses billions on billions of dollars. And Trump's been he he's been willing against uh, the post office, because he's like, look, uh, we lose all this money to, to Amazon, you know, who who uses us, you know, to make money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so he he he's not in control of he's not in control of the post office, right? Yeah. So uh, I, don't, I can't remember if it's if it's Congress has to. To change some of the the, the rules or laws, uh, how in regards to making the post office profitable and making the post office raise prices. Yeah. But he's been railing against he's been railing against uh, the post office losing money for years. So what he's saying now is no different than what he's been saying. But people are just kind of like making it an issue, like oh he's just bringing this up now. And that's not the case. He's been saying that. Now, now, here's you know, the, now here's, so, so here's the thing, it, enemy. The post, go ahead. Yeah. So now here's the thing, enemy. Uh, I didn't know that he honestly, I personally don't didn't know that he was talking about the Postal Service um, before this at all. Um, so this is that's news to me. I, I know that it seems like Jack was nodding his head. So mm-hmm. it, it, this this is not his first rodeo hearing <clears throat> about him talking about the Postal Service as well. But at the same time, I understand his concerns. I'd be concerned too if I was run shoot if I was Biden trying to run right now. I'd be concerned too. I'd be paranoid about that. 
for sure. No, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what side of the spectrum, uh, of the political spectrum that you lean on. If you are trying to vote, and there and things are getting delivered, like regardless, you are just trying to mail something or expecting something in the mail, and things go super slow, or or you know, or you're trying to vote and you want somebody in, or you want somebody to stay, or you want somebody out. The fact that everything is so lackluster over there now because of lack of funding, et cetera, you know, the laundry list of other reasons, I'm sure, would make any person nervous about this. Um, so, you know, it, it, I don't think it's a, I mean, I would think, I would think it is not a red or blue or conservative or liberal thing. It's literally a human situation where just a vo full on voter problem you know that needs to be figured out now because here it is doesn't matter who you vote for you still want your vote to go in if it goes in two weeks later you know what i'm saying or it gets lost your vote gets lost in the damn mail that's terrible then you, then you know what i'm saying then it turns into a thing of oh uh, a recount and, and and all that stuff and i and i could see that happening as well if the mail-in voting happens, because if suddenly a 10,000 mail-in votes just suddenly come in a week after the elections, I could see Trump making a, 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 a fit about it. I could even see Biden making a fit about it, depending on who wins. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So I'm yeah, completely I'm on. Exactly I'm, I'm cool. com yeah. So I'm completely on board with you. Uh, you know, I don't I don't think that it's a conspiracy theory to get him voted out. I just think that it's a literally it's a problem of people not being able to get their votes in in the right time properly. And I think that happens on both both sides of this of this particular fence here for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, well, there's We're there's gonna... millions of people. Go ahead. Is that, is that, go ahead. Yeah, we're going to oh, say, yeah. so say absolutely. I mean, they, I mean, I know that there's been a whole bunch of discussions over the you know, past decade in regards to what's going on at the USPS. Uh, and, and they haven't been profitable, but they're required to be here. Um, and, you know, I thought that there's there's been an idea that's passed around for a while now about making the USPS back into a bank because uh, it used to be a bank back in the day uh, for all federal employees. And if they were to do that again, then it, it has an income stream uh, and can have an additional support system to it. Uh, it can make it to where workers have, you know, a, a, they don't have to necessarily be doing the mail part. Now they have enough positions where they could offer it up for bankers. Uh, and, you know, I always thought that would be an interesting way to address the issues with the USPS. Uh, but for whatever reason that, you know, hasn't come back to fruition yet. Uh, but, you know, they, absolutely. any. any it's with, you know, there's so much, you know, uh, issues on both sides of not wanting the other side to win, that there's always going to be some group of people that's going to cause some kind of issue. And then you also have to just look at the workers themselves. I mean, there's already been stories over the past couple of years about, you know, finding mail trucks in uh, storage units that still have full of mail. And, uh, you know, other ones are they're finding that there's bags of trash full, full of mail because of the workers just are not doing their job. Uh, and, and you're going to have that across any industry, really, where, you know, you just have some workers that aren't doing their job. Uh, and, and that's a big issue, too. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's going to cause a huge issue because we don't have enough people to count all the ballots and, and at least in a timely manner. And that's going to be where a lot of frustration comes out. Yeah, and I I, yeah that's a good point. I, 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 can I say something real quick, Pascal? Yeah, shoot. Yeah, so... I mean, if if you look at how the majority, of, not the majority, but the percentage of mail that doesn't make it to uh, to their to its destination, it's probably going to be a larger percentage of mail that doesn't make it to its destination than they say uh, the amount of the amount of something like let's say COVID, right? The, the the percentage amount. And so you'll say, okay, well, we're at 0 0.4, I think it's, Jack knows about the 0 0.4, 0, uh, or, or 0 0.4. 
uh, people that that catch COVID, right? Well, the percentage of male that arrives, so we can shut down the the entire economy based on that and say, well, you know, uh, that's not even one percent, but the mail in when people mail stuff, it's a it's a large amount and say, well, that's justifiable to have mail in ballot. You know, two or three percent can can swing the vote. I mean, swing the election uh, one way or the other. So yeah, I just don't think that I, don't, I just don't think that in an election year that we just all of a sudden say that like, let's have these mail in voting. You have people that are going shopping. I'm just saying, I don't know how it is, but it's just like we're just throwing a mask and we do whatever. People, people are at work, people are shopping, people are going to church, people are doing all these other things uh, with masks on, but then they can't go stand in line and uh, social distance and vote. Facts. And I, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that, and that and that part doesn't make sense to me either. It's it's like you know, if you have no problem going to your local grocery store. And picking up a gallon of milk and going in there, buying it, paying for it, swiping your card and moving on. If you have no problem doing that, then you shouldn't you shouldn't have a problem walking in and just do your do your vote at a at an actual location, at a voting location. You know that that shouldn't be an issue. I know that there are a lot of people out there that are. You know, there are a lot of uh, uh, disabled people out there that can't move around as much. There are a lot of people that are voting that don't live, you know, where they're voting for or what state they're voting for or in. Um, they don't live in anymore. So but they still you, you see what I'm saying, that they still want to vote. And I understand those things or, or people that are on the road a lot. I understand those parts. But at the same time, if there's a will, there's most definitely a way. And uh, I think that they just need to figure some different things out. If the if the postal service is acting a damn fool, or it's glitchy as all get out, maybe there's another option that they can figure out to make things happen in a proper way. But Enemy Nation, thank you so much for yeah. calling in, brother. Thank you so much. Thanks for the call, man. Thank you, thank you, man. Thank See you, you in the chat. Peace. Now, Enemy Nation did say a, a lot of really good stuff there um, because it is true. I mean. We we do need to they do <laughs> they do need to figure this thing whole thing out because the voting the the voting is very it, this is very important something needs to be figured out man I mean this this is getting ridiculous um, if if the postal service is a problem or has always been a problem then find another way out find another way you know what I'm saying just figure it out you know. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here saying that they just need to, that they have to, because I've, I've been seeing some things like defund the Postal Service. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's a lot of, that's a lot of jobs being gone. I think that's ridiculous. We need them just as much as those people, those essential workers, those people who work in the Postal Service. They need that job just as much as we need them. But we, we got to figure out a different way to handle this properly. And if it means that we just do digital, but that also throws up a lot of problems there too. People could hack into things. It, Russia could go and tamper things. China could come in here and, and, and put a <laughs> Rona on some viruses up in the whatever app that is, be, that is created for the ballots. There's just got to be a new and better procedure from here on out. Obviously, we are going to have the Rona for a little while. We're, we're all going to be dodging the Rona for a while. So we just got to figure out different ways in which we can vote where it can't be tampered with. Mm -hmm. We don't have to we don't have to uh, uh, rely on a, a major third party or a middleman that's going to deliver our our, our ballots. We just got to figure out a different way. You know, what do you guys think? Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that is interesting about it is that I wonder how the comparison is of what amount of fraud would happen from mail-in ballots versus the current fraud that we already know that happens with the actual ballot machines. Because the, there was like what last year there or the last election, they're having it to where people are going in and they're hitting one thing and it was changing the vote yep. to the other thing. And like, I remember you know, that too. Glitches basically on the screen touch part. 
and then you know you look at who owns a lot of the technology and the rights to the ballots, right? Yeah. The ballot boxes. Uh, Kushner family. The Jared Kushner owns Wait, a what? large percentage into the ballot machines, and no. that is that has gotten uh, the last like. Uh, you lying. Like the last thing to be able to be the one that can be in a lot of these cities and states. That's true. Yeah. Bruh. Yeah. Oh well, my god. That's crazy to think. That's crazy. That's a twist. That's a huge twist. You know what I mean? Twist. As the world it's... turns. Dun dun dun. <laughs> you know, evil evil twin. There's an evil twin. Dun dun dun. No, seriously, that's crazy. Uh Brandy also said last year she said <clears throat> last year there was an issue in in uh North Carolina with ballot tampering. Not associated with the USPS, but look up North Carolina ninth ninth district election 2019, and that and that's very interesting too. It, you know, it. I think if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. When it comes to by any means necessary, there's there's going to be tampering of some sort. And I remember that there was something uh, a long time ago that they uh, with uh, Bush, Jr. Um, there was tampering then too. We got a phone call. Let me get this real quick. Okay. You on the mic with the Pascal Show. What's your name and where you calling from? Hey, this is uh, Ken Yuvin from Colorado. What's your name? Ken Yuvin from Colorado. Ten Yuvin? Yeah. What's up, man? I'm sorry, you're breaking What's up like man? crazy. You're, yeah, it's good. choppy. You're getting a little choppy, but uh, we're, we're trying to hear you. How you doing, brother? I'm pretty good. How you doing, man? Man, you know, I'm living life. You know what I'm saying? As much as it can be golden, you know what I'm saying? As much as it can be golden right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how's Colorado How's Colorado treating you, brother? Uh, it's nice. Uh, the smoke has finally gone away from the wildfire, so that's a plus. <laughs> that, from the what? The wildfires? Wildfires. Wildfires. Yeah. Okay, that's that's news to me. I don't know if I'm... Me too. Yeah. What, what, what wildfires? Hey, it's up to 40,000 acres now. Dang. Wow, man. Shoot. Oh, crap. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? Because I know last night you were going to talk about it, but we didn't really get to t uh, to jump into it. Everybody was chiming in about everything that we were talking about last night. So um, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this whole mail ball mail in ballots, et cetera? Uh, basically, I, I don't think there's a problem with mail in balloting in general. I think the only problem is that we're trying to do this in two months, and that's simply not enough time. And like, because some places do have systems for this. Like in Colorado, you drop it off. Or you can drop it off in a specific ballot box, and someone from the election commission with an officer usually picks them up. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like uh, I was talking to Michelle Kamel. It sounds similar in Oregon. So like, if that that system needs to be built in every place before we can do this, because we can't really depend on the USPS to uh, the post office to handle this. It's not really they're not really able to right now. And like <clears throat> we already saw uh, saw this with the primaries, for instance, in like uh, Nevada, two hundred twenty three thousand votes were thrown out during the Democratic primary, and uh, in Oklahoma or maybe it was Wisconsin, they were receiving uh, these were applications, not ballots. They were receiving applications for even pets and dead people. It's, it's their applications is not as big of a deal, but it's kind of an indication they're yeah. shotgunning these things out. They're not really looking make sure they're sending them to the right people or people that are even Americans. Or right. Right. And, and like, and that is true. I remember that conversation that we had um, a little bit ago in regards to that. Yeah. About the, the those mail-in ballots and like, apparently they found like a, a like there was just a, a, a stack of them just sitting in the corner somewhere, like just <laughs> like 10,000 votes just sitting there, just chilling somewhere in a box um, like it's, it's crazy. Real talk. Ed, Ed just made like a, whoa, kind of look. Yeah. Shit. This is, it's real. Like it's, it's real. Like th those things are real. And then of course, yeah. Like dead people, um, uh, pets, names of pets, so on and so forth. Basically, uh, Nevada tried to Kanye their way into the, into the, ba <laughs> into the, the votes. I'm sorry. Did I just kill Ed? I just killed him. He just died. Yeah, 17 no, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> yeah. Same thing about drip. So. I haven't died yet. I, I ain't said nothing here. about no drip yet. I ain't said nothing about drip. But 
That is very true. So the, uh, y you're right, Tanavain. I mean, it's like, it's 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 a thing. It's it's definitely a concern to be able to run this thing, be able to do the ballots, but uh, uh, do the mail-in ballots. But yeah, you're right. The I f I think that if the primaries in Nevada were that jacked up, you don't. Th it's kind of like why don't they think of a different way that's a little bit more foolproof to be able to have people mail in their ballots. But then you also got to remember this too. How many other people have done that before? Think about it. How many other how many other elections have happened the exact same way? This is a this I bet you is not their first rodeo with dead animals and and dead people's names on ballots. Let's just keep right. it straight funky. So it's not like this is something that just came out of the blue like, "Oh, oh my god. He put Mr. Fido Smith." Like no, it it's not a surprise. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So it's like, all right, if this has been a problem, why didn't they fix it before? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's like the husband with the the leaky leaky faucet. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to it. And then all of a sudden, you got a flood in the in the kitchen, and the wife is looking at you, going, "Mm hmm, I told you." But he's like, "Oh, but you, but I said I was gonna get to it." See what I'm saying? Then it's like, damn, I should have gotten into gotten to it when it was a leaky faucet. Now this thing is really bad. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, bruh, come on. Come on, let's get to it. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to this mess. So I don't know what they're gonna do in you know in just a few months, which is this is whack, by the way. It's whack. You know, but at the same time, it's like either we just go with it and keep going with what it is. Or we cut it and just hey, everybody has to just walk in and, and, and vote. I Even mean, if, also you gotta you know, go ahead, Ed. Also you gotta think about like the reason why maybe this would have been priority and top of the mind if COVID wasn't happening. Right. Like maybe they would be thinking about a, a way to fix this if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic. You know what? I think the oh. only Ed, I, I I agree with you on that, but I also wanna throw this back at you. Like the only reason why they're looking at it is because of COVID. Think about it. The only reason why they're looking at the leaky faucet is because it's it's starting to smell like sewage. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's the yeah. only reason why. If that there was sense. no leaky if there was no leaky faucet, if there was no problems, if there was no COVID, if there was no <laughs> Rona, this would not be a problem. We would not even be talking about this right now, I would think. I would think maybe the, maybe, maybe the Trump would say of, something, but that's about it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tanner Bain. The post office is kind of like simply because, you know, you're not dealing with people that are uh, selective for election purposes. You have the problem that uh, private citizens are the ones taking these ballots and collecting them. Mm -hmm. But like who you voted for in the past is, uh, you know, it's a secret, but it's not a secret like what party you're affiliated with or like mm -hmm. things like that. So it's fairly easy. Like if someone, a single post office worker, wanted to just like check through the names and remove voters from uh, someone registered with a party they're not aligned with, they could do that, and there Facts. wouldn't be any oversight you, because there's no like special scanning for election ballots right now. It just goes in like regular mail. That is true, but I'll, I'll tell you this: that postal worker, that dude's arm would be super tired from just doing this all the time. Whoops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoops. That's like 10,000 votes that he's just doing this all day, too. That's a lot. He got one strong delt. Let me tell you. That's one strong arm. Yeah. It's like, bow, getting that workout in. You know what I mean? Oh, you voted Trump? Nah, bro. We're going to take all that stuff out. That's a lot of time, though. You see what I'm saying? That's a lot of time. Yeah. But I see, I see your point for sure. You know, there's a lot of tampering that can happen. And that's why it's like, all right. We need to figure this thing out. Maybe we're not going to be able to fix it by tw this 2020 election, but maybe we can fix it for 2024. And it's something that's more fool foolproof that we know for a fact that we can. Man, I mean, there's there's so many different ways that they do stuff online. I'm, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Before everyone jumps down my throat and all that, there's ways to tamper. There's ways to do X, Y, and Z. But at the same time, why do we trust going online and using PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, any of them mugs? You know what I'm saying? All the information's out there like that. Then also on top of that, why not it be a situation where they go, hey, we want to see the front and back of your license. 
you know, while you're voting. Boop. That's my face. Th that's that's the front. Here's the back. Boop. I vote X, Y, and Z. Send. Done. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, then you don't have to worry about anything. There's a deadline. You get all those votes in. Somebody trustworthy, trustworthy is going through those things, counting all those votes, and call it a damn day. That's yeah. it. Just That's a pretty, pretty smart idea. Why not send it through the DMV where they have all your stuff on file already? And so you, dish, they already have baby. access online. And they have they know who you are. And you can get a state ID or a driver's license. Exactly. Which you need to vote. Bang. I like I was thinking they could use something from the social security system too, since everyone can log in with their own social security code. Yeah. As a requirement yeah. that you have to upload your ID uh, along with that and you'll be able to kind of send in a digital package that each like only the professional can review. Exactly. See what I'm saying? Sure. Then you don't. Then you don't have like you know. What's your serial <laughs> number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> Mr. Fido? Yeah. Oh, we need to see your ID though. Mm -hmm. Damn, I don't have an ID for my dog, my dead dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How about a quick selfie? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Pulling out the shovel. <laughs> Pulling out the shovel. You know what I mean? Take oh, okay. Up. Pulling yeah. out the shovel. Okay, take a photo. You know what I mean? Dead Fido. Like that don't work. <laughs> That ain't human, so that is a false, you know, vote. So I just, I just keep thinking like, there's other ways that we can do this. There's other ways we can get around the 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 postal service and and then have people, other future candidates, candidates not think that things are being tampered with. There's just got to be a more foolproof way of things not being tampered with. And and I think that we're in the world and we're in the time now where digital would be amazing. Shoot, man, think about it. Think about it. They're already doing it with like American Idol already doing it. You know what I mean? America's Got Talent is already doing it. Casting your vote at text 999-73000, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? They're already doing that. So why not? It's the ultimate America's Got Talent show anyway. Let's be real. So why not cast our I votes be... through that way and call it a damn day? What were you going to say, Tana Bay? Um, I wouldn't be surprised with uh, you know, how, how uh, unreliable the polling is lately. And even the news pollers have specified that they're not able to accurately poll uh, cisgendered white or black males. Like, we already know those polls are highly inaccurate, so... I imagine both political parties are kind of afraid since there's not a good way for them to gather information. And this might all just be so both of them can start building up. So, like, look, these ballots, there were problems with ballots here. So, obviously, they probably didn't elect Trump or Biden. It was for the other person and there was fraud. Even if there wasn't fraud, it just gives a uh, kind of reason for a constant and immediate legal battle over the election because they can point to specific cases where a vast percentage of the votes were not correctly counted. Hmm. What, do you, what do you guys think? Ed, what do you think? Hmm. I just think this is just a whole Pandora's box of just stuff. In general. <laughs> like, I, I just think that, I mean, because I was thinking, honestly, I was thinking about like what you, what all of you, what you all were saying about, um, oh, you can just do it through the DMV. I mean, the, the Russians hacked an election. Do we not think that they they can hack the DMV? Oh, they probably already are in the DMV. They probably, and they probably already <laughs> are. So it's kind of like I, I I don't I feel like I mean yeah the ID things like yeah we could yeah you have to have your ID and you have to take a picture of your front and back great but that's not going to stop anybody from hacking through whatever firewall you have up. I mean I, I I don't really I mean I feel like the only full like true foolproof way is to just like stand in the cold for us because it's it's usually cold here by that time to stand in the cold and go vote i mean just kind of just where we are i mean where everybody we're paranoid about mailing balloting all right okay let's do it online all right we do it online uh they could probably hack that oh crap well i guess we just have to go and we just have to go to the polls then and just like stand in line do it the old school way and just be done but yeah so, and someone just said the DMV is also infamous for their their 
Efficiency. Uh, efficiency. And I'm like, <laughs> I know that's sarcasm. Yeah, that's sarcasm. I mean, here it is. Clearly, they're Russian because every DMV except for one that I've seen so far, any every person that I've seen that works in the DMV is rude as hell. So that they're, they're clearly Russian. Clearly. Man. Every single one of them. They've been infiltrated. Okay. And also your weight is usually like five hours. It's like, yeah, see yeah. that line over there? Yeah, it's behind that line. Right. Yeah. Go go to the end of that other line that's behind the other line and just just wait. You'll get here. Yeah. Especially oh, now because there's six feet distance between everybody, so it's wrapping around the door, out the door, down the block. Yep. Yeah, they're they're like, hey, comrade. You know, Ed walks up to the DMV. Comrade, you have to stand six feet. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Hi, how are you? Six feet. <laughs> Thank you for coming. All right. Wear your mask. I mean, wear your mask, please. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, we got to go to a quick commercial break. Uh, Tanu Vane, thank you so much for the phone call. I really, really appreciate it, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Anytime, brother. Good talking to you. Yeah, man. Um, but we got to jump into a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about a bison attack in Custard Park. What? We'll be right back. This is the Pascal Show. Bye. Ms. Feinberg, I'd really appreciate it if you would close your legs. Do you find it distracting? But you see how he makes these S's in his body right here? That's where he's hanging on, and then he's moving forward with the locomotion of his ribs. That is classic Missouri rat snake right there. I mean, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab him before he uh, gets into a hole. Now these snakes are not biters. They won't bite as long as you don't squeeze them. If you just stop them like this, it'll freeze them, and then you just gently pull them back. As long as you don't squeeze them, they won't bite. Yo, Mike, what's, what's up, man? Again? Good to see you, man. Yeah, so sugar fire. Yeah. Fully open, right? Yeah, we're pretty much open. Um, awesome. You can't sit inside yet. Monday, you can sit inside a little bit. We'll have 25% of the tables inside, and then we're letting it rip outside. So I know that there's a lot of people who are really concerned about uh, staying safe and yeah. all of that. No, so what are you guys that. doing in regards to that? Well, um, and we have extra people to clean and rub everything down all the time. Everybody inside is wearing masks. And we have little, little stickers on the ground so everyone can stay six feet apart. Right on. The tables are all spaced out, inside and outside. Sugar fire open in full effect right now. They're staying healthy, they're staying clean. Go get you a rack of ribs. Sugar fire, open right now. Thanks. The Fur and Leather Center, providing the highest of fur and leather goods. I'm sorry, tonight. I can't make this interview boring because this no, man is boring. too exciting as a host. And I'm truly saying this, and if y'all can't do this, me and this man here is going to leave and go somewhere else where we can get some love. I want everyone in the building to say, I love Pascal on the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Wow. Homeowners and property managers, if you're looking for effective and humane ways to remove wild animals and deal with the damage that they have caused, we have good news for you. Introducing Wildlife Command Center, a professional nuisance wildlife management company specializing in providing animal removal for residential, industrial, and commercial clients. We are the only wildlife company that checks 70 different areas on a structure to determine the answers to the following questions. Exactly which animal are we dealing with? How is the animal getting inside the home? 
What kind of damage is the animal doing to the structure? Once we get the answers to all of these questions, we develop and write up an action plan to resolve the animal issue completely and provide a quote to implement that action plan. We perform a very in-depth 70-point wildlife inspection. From visually inspecting the highest point, the chimney, to physically crawling inside the attic space and looking for animals, chewed wires, fecal matter, chewed structural wood, we inspect everything. Our inspection process covers all of the following 70 points. Animal proof chimney cap, roof ridge vents, roof dysophic junctions, dormer fascia, attic gable vents, gutter lines, fascia trim, garage door, utility penetrations, water, gas, electric, and cable, bathroom vents, attic roof ridge vents, attic electrical wiring junctions, boxes, and lighting, concrete decks, additions, wooden crawl spaces, basement plumbing, penetrations, ceiling floor and wall. Wildlife Command Center's mission is to deliver the finest quality wildlife removal and pest control service that is safe for the environment. For more information, call us now. All right, welcome, welcome back, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Shout out to Tano Vane and Enemy Nation for calling in. We really appreciate the phone calls. Ain't no lie, we always ap appreciate the phone calls and the opinions and all that. We really do. Anyway, for those of y'all who are just tuning in and checking out the show, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please go hit that like button <clears throat> underneath this feed right now. Just a, a, a friendly reminder. We, we really appreciate the feedback and the love. And uh, of course, if this is your first time checking out the show, crush that subscribe button on our channel. We do this show Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And also we do our show or I do a show, a little late night show, if you will, or like an evening show at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I will be on tonight later tonight at 9 p.m. So be sure to uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, you know, I'll be taking phone calls we'll be talking about whatever's going on we'll talk, do a recap of of the week and any of the things that might be popping off during this time or during the time once this show is over uh but anyway we got to jump into the next story that we have which i found very very interesting there was a bison that attacked a woman at a park um and this is really weird um so a bison was seen on video at, at, uh, at a park in South Dakota as it charged a female motorcycle passenger um, who actually escaped. She's, she's, she suffered serious injuries um, <sighs> because, you, it, I don't know, you just got to see this video. It's insane. It's pretty crazy. This is why you don't mess with nature, y'all. This was in Custer State Park in the Black Hills. Yes, right? sir. Okay. Thank you for that detail. Oh, and that bison attack at a state park in South Dakota caught on camera. A bison charging a motorcycle passenger. Diane Macedo has a story. This morning, a bison attack caught on camera. Holy Oh my God! Look at that. Just Video shows around. a woman tossed around oh by God. the animal in South Dakota's Custer State Don't. Park. A shocked onlookers watch. She's unconscious. The 54-year-old woman was attempting to approach a bison calf Wednesday. How close does she have to get? When an adult bison charged. Oh my God. Animal experts say adult bison can weigh up to 2,200 pounds and can be aggressive if provoked. <laughs> bison can be really you think? unpredictable. That's the risk with them. They may look calm sitting, you know, right off the path, but they can change in an instant the woman lost consciousness as the bison swung her around its horn caught on her belt and jeans but she escaped serious injury after her pants came off oh my god it got her now local sheriffs are reminding visitors to the park if you see bison keep your distance now, after the attack happened the bison ran off with the rest of the herd but the local sheriff's office had actually issued a warning about this days before it happened they say bison occasionally block the road and are advising people if that happens stay in or on your vehicle and guys they also say to remember that in this park it's their park 
and we are the guests. Yeah. Facts. I don't understand why people think that they can get close to a bison or let's just say a calf mm -hmm. and think that mama ain't looking from a distance. I'm just letting y'all know. You know, now obviously, unfortunately, it, it's it's terrible that that happened to that woman. Um, of course, we that sucks. That's always terrible news when when somebody um, gets attacked by any type of animal, um, you know, in some vicious and terrible manner. But at the same time, she kind of should have known better. <laughs> I hate to be that guy. I hate to be a, that that rude of a human being. But she should have known better. I mean, keep it real. I mean, I'm going to keep it real. That's why I don't mess with ducks, like with geese. Like, you know, whenever you see this, the, the little ducklings walking around, and I've seen it time and time again where people go up to, oh, my God, look at the little ducklings. They run over, and all of a sudden, the mama or the papa gets super aggro, like super aggressive. You've seen it. I'm sure you've all seen those moments where a kid or a person gets attacked by just like a flock of geese. It ain't gangster. Mm -hmm. It ain't fun. You know what I'm saying? That is not a cool thing that you want to experience. So when you are approaching, I would just say nine times out of 10, if you're approaching something that uh, an animal that seems like it's the runt of the, of the group or of the herd, nine times out of 10, it's still a baby. Keep your distance. Trying to get that perfect photo, that perfect selfie with a baby, any animal. Usually, mama is lurking from behind. Trust. Bad idea, guys. Bad idea. Yeah. I'm so sorry for that girl. Uh, you know, I hope she's okay. Or I hope she heals properly. Because the way that that bison was throwing her around, woo! I'm just saying. I'm sorry. I'd, I'd be watching. I'd, pff, I'd be 50 yards away and going, "Ooh, look at the pretty bison. That's it. If people are like, come get closer. No, nope, I'm good. Exactly where I am. I don't need to die. I'm good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cheech. Somebody, somebody named Cheech just said misogynist bison. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, my God. Uh, Alex, Alex Jones. Exactly. Approach with caution. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Keep make sure your peripheries on point. Your peripherals are on point. You know what I'm saying? At least somebody in that group should have your six. You feel me? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Make sure somebody yeah. got your six. Hey, I'm about to try to take a photo of this calf in front of with a bunch of bison that are tons and tons of pounds. Like keep an eye on me. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Because there's been a lot of attacks like that lately. And it's funny how yeah. nature is starting to get really angry right now. Nature in general has just been very not happy with with humans lately. There have been a lot of other attacks where bison have been attacking people because they're getting too close to them. Yeah. And people are real ballsy out here thinking, oh, yeah, you know. It's just a bison. What they gonna do, bruh? Come on now, you know exactly. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Throw that, those uh, horns. And dancing with dances with wolves. Dancing what, dances what, with wolves. Yeah. What what, what, do you, what what they say bison is? I have no idea. Uh, it'll come to me a little bit later. Uh, it, you know, it, it's happened. What last what six months? Wasn't there the little girl that the bison went after and like flipped up in the air? Yep. Uh, I think it was at maybe the same park. Like mm, this is. Uh, I, I think it was at Yosemite. Oh, then Yosemite. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, I think it was. It, it, but they're wild animals that are kept in a captive area, I guess. Uh, but it's a insane thing to think that you can walk up to something that large, but that has horns. Thank you. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, no. And, and the thing is, is what, uh, and I, I just the, the piggyback of what off of what you just said. Same thing. Damien, Damien on uh, YouTube. Hello, Damien. Thank you so much for the comment. He said, and uh, and so not ever approach a baby animal out of the blue. 
its parents don't know you. So the safest course of action for their child is to remove you. But do you understand that's the same thing in human condition as well? Mm -hmm. If you approach anybody's kid, you know, for a fact, you're about to get a knuckle sandwich. You're about to get hurt. You know what I'm saying? You just don't go up to any like it's survival of the fittest. You know what I'm saying? It's protecting your own. So I'm sorry. That's really that woman. I'm sorry that she's hurt, but that's some stupid, stupid. You got to be a special kind of stupid to try to walk up to that, that bison, that baby calf, thinking you're going to be all right. That's all I'm going to say. Be all right. Or get a camera with a nice zoom lens. You know what I'm saying? You can get it like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to get so damn close. Bruh. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Glad she's okay. Yeah. Pants on the ground, pants on the ground. Looking like a fool <laughs> with your pants on the ground. <laughs> Sorry to say it like that, but man. Shoot. Um, but yes. Um, so that's also really, really terrible. Uh, also, you know, in, in other news, uh, Jack, you had a couple other pieces of news too, right? Yeah. Some other random so, light ones too. Yeah, we had, uh, let me let me pull up what this, uh, this yeah, article sure. title was. Oh, David Blaine. Okay. Yes, David now, Blaine. We, we what all know is this? and love David Blaine for his his magic uh, um, and, and you know his stunt, stunts. Stunt performer. He, he's <laughs> more like a. I don't know if he's really like a magician. Really, I mean, he's like an illusionist slash stunt man. You know, he's like I'm a. Say, I'm say alien. He's like he's a hybrid alien. of David Copperfield and Evil Knievel, except he yeah. doesn't jump off with bikes and have many broken bones. So, yeah. Right. So, uh, but he has announced his newest stunt, and what he's going to do okay. is float to New York holding balloons for 75 miles from New Jersey, and the balloons are just going to be filled with helium. If he can control wind patterns, is he going to have like little fans on him, or like, what's his intention there? Uh, you know, this is just one of those things it. where it's like, you know, it's going to be this guy just hanging there, you know, just in the air. <laughs> like, I, if he's hold, like holding balloons, he didn't say that he's going to be like sitting in a chair that's held up by balloons. Yeah. Like, it, this is going to be one of those things where you're going to see a man floating in the air above you <laughs> holding on to some helium balloons. It's like every kid's dream. No, like, <laughs> actually, every kid's nightmare, because if they've seen Pennywise the Clown, if they've seen It, that's what he does all day long. Is he going to be dressed up as Pennywise? Hiya, Georgie. You know what I mean? Is he going to be like, you know what I'm saying? It's in It. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so he probably was like watching the, sh the movie, and he's like, that's kind of cool. I need to do that. <laughs> I mean, not the clown, but I mean the, the balloons. I wonder how many balloons he's going to have, too. Cause that's yeah, 70, right. That's like 75 miles. That's 75 miles. That's a lot of mileage to hang on to a group, a, 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 a cluster of balloons, bro. That's insane. And are they like filling them up to where like they're there and he, like he's going to grab it and they like release a net and like he just takes off into the air. Is he like jumping out of a plane, holding on to balloons? Like what's the process? Uh, <laughs> He's like, I'm jumping out of a helicopter. Oh, I didn't think about it. Yeah. Oh, like, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, wait. So like, let me let me ask you this then. Um, how? How? Actually, when is he said? Did he say a date? Is there a deadline? Is there a moment? Uh, that, when is the stunt going to be performed? Let's see here. <clears throat> uh, Inquiring minds would like to know. Yes. Because I want to see me, it. I'm pulling up another article. This one does not have a date. Um, so, oh yeah, so the illusionist endurance audience is partnering with YouTube for the event titled Ascension, where he'll bring wonder, hope, and untethered possibility as he launches from New Jersey and journeys across his native New York City skyline to tackle his most ambitious and revolutionary feat yet. Uh, and there's a photo. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll get this thing in here. I'm gonna put it uh, in the background. And yeah, and the, this stunt has been 10 years in the making, Blaine wrote uh, Wednesday on his Twitter. Uh, let's turn 
Squirry into one magic to new heights. Wait, you see wait, what he did there? What did he say? <laughs> what, let's turn you. You broke up there. Let's, let's, turn. let's take worry into wonder. Okay. Let's turn worry into wonder and take magic to new heights. And get it. Okay. Touche. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm seeing here the, the thing stopped downloading for me here. So hold on. Okay, let's see when it's going to happen. August 31st. Whoa, it's soon. Yeah. Holy cow. Seriously. Uh, wow, he's doing that in like, wow, bruh. Weeks. Yeah. Uh, two weeks, two, two weeks, yeah, something like that. Yeah, just about. Holy so, cow, that's ballsy, uh, man. Let me see if I can get this photo. I'll be it, watching that. It was an HTML, and so it wasn't wasn't being nice to me. Uh, it's all good. It's a photo. It's an actual yeah, the, photo. Yeah, well, it's like they're like, um, I guess what it might look like. Mm. Um, let me screenshot this. That thing, is I'll put it fascinating, up. though. It's you know, it, the dude's done some crazy things. Uh, and, you know, and it's he has just, done some crazy things. You know, what was the last couple of stuff he did? Like he froze himself in in a block, you know, for a certain amount of time. And then he's holding his breath for the longest, like ever. Like he's taught himself. I don't know if you've seen his like latest things. Like he's gone on these journeys of stuff to find these other people that have done you know these these stunts and things like that. Yeah. U- utilizing his lungs and his like his stomach, uh, and, and like to the greatest ability you possibly can right right have you seen him where he can swallow a goldfish and then he can regurgitate it on demand and like now he can like swallow water and then have it come back up on demand like and like hold things in areas of his stomach and he has like muscle control like it's or he just (sighs) has a lot of skill at illusion uh, no, this is like a legit thing where like people have like they've shown how it's how it works and it is just crazy. That's interesting. We'll, the, we'll find some videos of that for another show and we can talk yeah, about. I, I would love to see that because <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd love to see that because on, on some real stuff, mm, I, I would like to see that. I'll just say that, I, you know, because, yeah. you know, like I said, that's what he does. That's what he's yeah. here for. Is to do those things and all that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'd be interested to see this, what happens with that because that's crazy. Almost. It's all good. Take your time. There's no rush, you know. But um, but yeah, that's interesting. Also, um, I mean, he's always done some really crazy things. He's done ama- some really amazing things. Um, you know, he's his stuff is a different type of illusion or a different type of a different approach you know because david copperfield has done other things like making certain buildings disappear you know Mm -hmm. he's he's done some really cool effects like really cool um illusions which have been which have been really amazing but you know like i said i'd be interested to see how he accomplishes that safely because i have a feeling that a lot of people would not want to see him fall although Maybe part of the illusion is him falling. Mm. Seriously, think about it. And then all mm. of a sudden he gets back up and he's fine. I'm just saying. Everyone thinks, "Oh my God, he's dead!" And then he's fine. He's like, "Yeah, I'm here. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm totally fine." Yeah, he's like, "Here, I'm here on Mars. I floated away." Magic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? And everyone's like, "Oh my Gotta God!" Some glitter. <laughs> yeah, that glitter. You know what I mean? Magic. You know, let's see here. My computer, I swear, trying to use Skype with here. the backgrounds and upload anything me, like freezes just, my computer like crazy. Where did you find this? Did you? Did I you... got it here. It's just like don't oh. don't like come I and like subvert me now that I've tried so long. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was just saying because you know it's going up. It's going up. Okay, okay. I was did just saying. Oh, now? there we go. Hold on. It's like up. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's like up. That's it. Just a bunch of balloons. He's going to be just just chilling. Interesting. That so, shoulder better be in good shape. I know. it's good. <laughs> All I'm saying is, so we, Jack, we waited all that time for you to download that. 
Really? Hold on. Let me see what it's looking like to you. You just see, like, balloons, or do you even see him? I don't see anything <laughs> except balloons. Oh, no. Well, he's hanging from the bottom in this image. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm like, thanks, Jack. Hey, put, it, put it full screen. I am putting like, it full screen. I'm full screen? Yeah. And it's still nothing. Still nothing. Yeah, move out the way real quick so you can see it for yourself. Take a look. See? On, it's just a string and then balloons and trees well, on either on, side. There's a guy on the bottom of that string. So. <laughs> fantastic fantastic Dang. thank you thank yeah. you you're welcome we are now dumber for listening <laughs> to that answer <laughs> oh man um well that's interesting um the other thing now i can get everything back to order okay the other thing is uh john legend and chrissy Teigen are are expecting a third child, y'all. So that's some interesting stuff as well. To them. Yes, I think that's very, very cool. Congratulations to them. Um, you know, there's uh, lately Christy Teigen. Christy Teigen has been in the, uh, let's just say, uh, she's been under fire quite a bit lately because of jokes she has put out there um, that have been, that have hint hinted towards pedophilia. Um, she's also on the, if I'm correct, she's on the flight flight list with, uh, Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein's flight list, um, uh, and all this stuff uh, in regards to pizza gate and all that. And it's very, very interesting, um, that, uh, she is under fire and now she's about to have her third child with John legend, but here it is, no matter what you guys say, uh, or what you guys think, um, Bringing life into the world is a beautiful thing. So congratulations to them. Um, they seem like they're very much in love and they, they seem really happy. And I, you know, the accusations that Chrissy Teigen's had, has, um, has been, uh, has gotten, I think are, are not real. I think they're super false. I think people have a lot of, have had a lot of time on their hands lately and they're just bored. Um, so they just want to go after people, especially celebrities. Um, but she is, um, I think I'm excited for them. I'm happy for them. You know what I mean? Let them keep yeah. having babies. Those are two beautiful, beautiful people. You know what I'm saying? So, and they're in love. So let them have beautiful children together. I am cool with that. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Um, but um, what else, Jack? You have something. Uh, so I saw another thing here too. Uh, that was talking about uh, Takashi Six Nine. Uh, oh. it's been, uh, I don't know if you've been watching around him. He's been running around everywhere. Oh uh, I guess since he got off house arrest, yeah. just doing whatever he could do. And then he like he tripped over his dog or his dog's leash or something like that, and like uh, sprained his his wrist. And so like he's walking around with a little cast on and stuff. And, but a lot of people are up in arms because he went and was paying his respects to uh, uh, Nip uh, Nipsey Hussle. So. Yeah, uh, and, and there's a photo of him that's out there in a video where he's walking around. There's a mural, uh, and he's like kneeling down, uh, paying his respects. And uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly why people are so why, why are people so upset about him? Uh, I guess going and paying respects to Nipsey and Hustle. Do you know? Is it just because they are just against Takashi in general? Uh, well, Takashi, like here it is, uh, Takashi. Uh, okay, Takashi's a snitch. Nobody likes right. a snitch. Nobody likes Takashi because Takashi's just like he has really full on embraced being a rat, and mm -hmm. people do not like that. Um, then on top of it, Nipsey Hussle was, you know, from from what we know, Nipsey Hussle was not a rat. Like this is this is a dude that was a good guy, you know, that was doing some things for his community, especially for his community. Um, and, uh, he, he died, he died too soon, you know? Um, so I think people are feeling some type of way because you got some dude, you got Takashi, who's a complete poser, um, coming out here, trying to show respect for somebody that he probably would have snitched on if he was in that situation. Um, so I think a lot of people are just like, you have no right to show any respect to Takashi, uh, to, um, Nipsey, to Nipsey when gotcha. you, you don't even respect your damn self. And so, gotcha. um, also just Takashi has been out here. Like he'd been out her, do, do, you know, handing out hundred dollar bills, just doing all kinds of crazy, stupid things. Um, and just trying to show that he's out there, but he's, mm -hmm. he is deep. Like he's mob deep in security. 
you know, he's got at least 20 security guards around him at all times. Like he ain't playing because he knows for a fact that he got a price on his head. But ain't nobody going to kill an informant. Ain't nobody going to kill an informant. So he's untouchable and he knows that. So that's why he's going around doing all this crazy stuff, doing these music videos, thinking that he's that, you know, knowing and, and believing that he's untouchable. But one day he'll get his. I don't invoke. I don't I don't invoke or I do not uh, condone uh, 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 violence upon the man. But I think that karma will come back and get him. And as much as he's sitting here going, oh, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, you know, I'm untouchable. Whoop de woo. I'm I'm Takashi six nine. You know, one day either his sales will drop or no one will give a damn about him and we will keep it moving. But until then, we're going to have to deal with Takashi six nine sightings till the end of time just right. saying and, and he's still sucks. doing collabs with all these other yeah. uh, artists as well so and that's why he's going to stay relevant you know what i'm saying yeah. until he until people realize how much of a whack character he is they will always there he will always be here like i said yeah. till the end of time anyway moving on left turn completely <laughs> left turn but we got to talk about it. Edward Snowden is trending hard right now on Twitter for this very reason. Uh, I'm just seeing this one tweet right now. Trump is open to allowing Ed Snowden to return to the U.S. from Russia without going to prison. He says there are a lot of people that think that he is not being treated right or treated fairly uh, before taking office. Trump denounced Snowden as a traitor and called for his execution. So this is a very interesting piece of news. Um, so, yes, he said that, the, you know, uh, he said there are a lot of people that think that he is uh, he is not being treated fairly. I mean, I hear that. Um, and he said, you know, he told the Post in an exclusive interview in the Oval Office bef uh, before soliciting views from his staff. Um, so he co commented on Snowden for the first time as president after accusing former uh, Barack Obama of spying on his 2016 campaign. Uh, he said, when you look at uh, former FBI director James Comey and former FBI deputy uh, director Andrew McCabe and former CIA director John uh, Brennan and excuse me, the man that sat at this desk, President Obama. Uh, got, uh, got caught spying on my campaign with with Biden, Biden and Obama and uh, Biden and Obama. And they got caught spying on the campaign. Uh, he com Trump's comments reflect on a remarkable softening in his views about the man who once deemed to be a traitor worthy of execution. Republican lawmakers and the Justice Department inspector general recently highlighted misuse of foreign language intelligence Foreign Language Intelligence Surveillance Act and the uh, secret FISA court to surveil former Trump advisor Carter Page. Snowden, he says, Snowden is one of the people they talk about. They talk about numerous people, but he is certainly one of the people that they do talk about. Um, I guess uh, the DOJ is looking to ex extradite, extradite him uh, right. Uh, I guess the DOJ is looking to extradite him right now. It's certainly mm -hmm. something I could look at. Many people are on his side. I will say that I don't know him. Never met him. But many people are on his side. So. It's interesting because um, one moment he said Snowden should be if he if he was ever to bring, come back into America, that he should be executed um, now. He is saying, eh, I don't eh. think they, they treated him, him unfairly. Hmm. Interesting. Well, what do you wait, think on that, Jack? For this, waiting for him to come over and then Trump be like, psych, gotcha. Word. <laughs> Word. And that's a very good possibility, too. Yeah. Um, you know, it uh, seems like a lot of times uh, Trump is, uh, from my understanding, always sarcastic <laughs> or always playing with the media. Um so I'm interested to see what happens with that as well. S Snowden, of all people, coming back to America would be something very, 
very interested. I would. Now, Snowden's legal team has tried in vain to negotiate a prison-free return to the U.S. for the former uh, for the former national security cons cons contractor who exposed the fact that the FISA court was secretly approving the dragnet collection of domestic call rec uh, records. So interesting. There and of course, is. before uh, taking office and before taking office, Trump tweeted at least 45 times denouncing Snowden as a traitor and calling for <laughs> his execution. Interesting. This is what he said in a tweet in 2013. Trump wrote Sn uh, Snowden Snowden is a spy who should be executed. But if uh, but if it. What? Executed. But if it and he could what? And he could reveal Obama's records. I might become a major fan. So but if but if. It and he could reveal i don't know what that means but if he could i guess but if he could reveal obama's records i'm just gonna edit it for him real quick mm. i might become a major fan so maybe that's the reason why he is sitting there going well maybe we don't execute him right away he could maybe he can become a an ally let's bring him in come on back to america yeah we, we you know I'll pardon you, but I need some, I need some candy. Now give me some candy. You see what I'm saying? Think about it. Think about it. Uh, he might have some I dirt. Mean, Snowden could have some dirt on anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anybody and everybody. So maybe at first he's like, man, execute the son of a gun but then now he's going well he might have a lot of good info that i could use for the re-election right and then also at the same time a lot of people would love to have snowden back in america and feel that snowden should be back in america what if he was to do that people would look at him like he is superman Yeah, I mean, a lot of people think that he did a public service. I mean, he even put out a, a tweet here about five hours ago. He said, the last time we heard a White House considering a pardon was 2016, when the very same attorney general who once charged me conceded that, on balance, my work in exposing the NSA's unconstitutional system of mass surveillance had been a public service. So, uh, I mean, he's done a couple different interviews. He did the one with um, Joe Rogan not too long ago. Uh, and, yes, he did. You know, he just is constantly saying, yeah, you're being watched. Uh, just because I expose it doesn't mean it stopped. You know, everyone's being watched. And, you know, but he did do a public service. But, you know, a lot of people see it as treason, the way that it, it went, went down. Right. Uh, especially the people that were in, you know, in charge at the time. So. But what are your thoughts on that? Like, it, you know, Snowden leaked a whole lot of information, told the tr exposed the truth to the American people, mm -hmm. do you think he's a traitor? I don't do you think consider so. I that think, a, I think do you that think do you consider that a traitorous a treacherous traitor act? I, I don't think so. I mean I, I think that obviously it, it exposes the government doing their mass surveillance and maybe they, you know, are not the main purpose was to find foreign you know at, uh, foreign people or groups that may be uh, you know vying to, against the United States. But the fact that they were like taking up so much information of, of, amongst everybody else to be able to have that that information about those individuals, uh, you know, it's obviously against the American public's interest. Yeah. And so uh, I think that what he did is a good thing. Now, the thing is, is like, obviously, when he left, when he was gone. He was. It was during Obama era, right? It was during the Obama administration. It makes you wonder what's Obama trying to hide? What other information was there that that caused them to cause Snowden to flee? But then, you know, you also got to remember. That doesn't stop Snowden from being able to leak out that other information. So why wouldn't he just put it out there? If he's in another country, he can always put it on a website. He can always put on edwardsnowden.com and just 
spit out, poop out all the information that he's got aside from the, the things that he did put out. If he knows more, wouldn't he have already done that by now? I mean, he also still I mean, worked for the government. He understands that there's still protocols. Maybe, you know, by doing that type of stuff, maybe you are, if you're leaking national secrets in a way, as, expo- as opposed to, like, exposing a overall system. But if you go down to the individual details and you start leaking information about people, then that, that's, you know, I think that's a different, different issue in itself. Yeah. If I was like, oh, hey, they're tracking you, Pascal. And by the way, here's what they got on you. Right. Like, th- those are two different conversations. Right. But, you know, he's a whistleblower, and he should be protected as such. Right. Um, uh, you know, uh, Enemy Nation just said something. Whistleblowers are being prosecuted left and right during the Obama administration. That's why Snow- Snowden did what he did the way he did it. Hmm. It's very true. Or, you know, that's a very good point for sure, enemy. I mean, that's the thing. I I guess, uh, you know, that's the thing of just trying to figure out what's the right way, you know, or or not the right way, but like where one stands on this information. I don't think he's a traitor. But I can see how government officials might see him as a traitor for sure. You're putting out information that shouldn't be out there and the world's not happy about that or like the government's not happy about that. The world appreciates it for sure, but I don't think everybody else is happy about that. You feel me? Yeah. That's true. You know, it's I like mean, it's... the you know, the administration like whatever, the 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 White House of any sort, House of, you know, the House, you know, the Senate, any of those branches are going to feel some type of way about getting any type of information exposed. You know, yeah, they're going to feel any type of way. I mean, they're automatically going to go. You're a traitor. Even if you were, even if he was to tell the full on truth to the American people of what they need to hear, they're still going to sit there and say, Oh, you're a traitor. The government's still going to go. You're a traitor. No matter what you're unpatriotic. You don't care about this country. And it's like, wait a second. No, we do actually. We do actually care about this. Country. He he does actually care about this country. He's trying to ex- tell the truth to the country. Does he yeah. does he need to flee? Does he need to run away? Does he need to go to Russia? Does he need to get charged the way he got charged for exposing the truth? I don't know. Comment down below, guys. Let me know what you think. Shouldn't be like that, I think. But at the same time, I'll tell you this, though. He was smart for leaving the country regardless. Because here's the thing. Even if they didn't want to try to throw him like under the prison, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody out there would have tried to kill him. Yeah, so I don't even see why he would want to come back to America in the begin- to begin with. Then right. he's a, then he's a, speaking of one snitch, <laughs> you know Takashi six nine. Takashi six nine just makes stupid songs. Edward Snowden just exposed the government's ass. You're telling me that there ain't gonna be somebody out there, no matter if he's mob deep in security. Somebody out there is gonna try to kill him. Doesn't matter. Some snipe, some snipe snipe snipe, 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 all day. Or some super patriotic son of a gun is going to be out there being like, you know, you're exposing things about my, my country that I died. Like, even so, it could be anything that I died for, you know, or that I live on. Putting, you better put respect on the name of this country. Anything's possible. So no matter what, he could be mobbed deep. He could have like some of the most highly trained killers on his team doesn't matter doesn't even matter people are going to go out of their way to ice that fool so i say stay your ass out of this country bruh man i would say you know what if you want to go to like canada go ahead go to canada you're kind of close you know what i'm saying you're close to the campfire you know but you're not going to be in it you know, well, he's not allowed there right now. So he's not. I don't think he's allowed anywhere. <laughs> I don't think he's allowed anywhere. <laughs> Russia was like, come, 
hang out with us, be our friend, you know, um, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, keep your enemies close and your, your friends close and your enemies closer. So why wouldn't he go to Russia? You know, right. he, he's probably being treated like a king, being fed grapes, you know, just chilling, drinking nothing but champagne and eating caviar. Actually, no, I think he's probably cold as hell in a small place, bored as hell with mm-hmm. bad Internet. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> I doubt that. Yeah, he's, he's probably in a Ritz somewhere. Yeah, he probably got yeah, the yeah, best, no. fastest computers of all time. Still he hacking into things. Web. Yep, just just surfing everything. Probably has several several uh, avatars, like several screen names that are just not him. You know, not his name. Just going in there, going. These are all true, but everybody's thinking that he's insane. He probably is James Joseph. You see what oh. I'm saying? He probably is James Joseph going in here, telling all these, dropping some gems, and we just don't know. We're just like, you know what I mean? He, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He could be anybody. He could Never be June know. 12th. He could be June 12th, 1776 up in this piece. You know, we could have just been on the phone with him. Tano Vane could have been Edward, Edward Snowden. You never know. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Shoot. You just don't know. He could be Yogi Fish. <laughs> Anyway, but I'm just saying this, this is very, very interesting. That's what's trending really hard right now, of course, um, because there are people that are seeking to see if he can get pardoned. And of course, there's a lot of people that are trying to get him back home. So, yeah. Uh, I, and there's a lot of people who think he's a traitor. And there's a lot of people who th- believe that he is a patriot, that he did something amazing for the country. And uh, yeah, definitely comment down below. Let the let the comments roll down below. Let us know what you think on that. Um I think, I don't think he's a traitor. I think he exposed the truth. And unfortunately, sometimes you got to be the bad guy when you tell the truth. People, some people just don't like hearing the truth. Right. But later they respect it, you know? And I think that's what, what, the, what the situation is, you know? So he didn't have to do that, but he did it anyway. And uh, that's, you know... Mad respect. Yeah, I mean, he put his life on the line. Most definitely. Most definitely. Anyway, I would kill to have a conversation with that guy. Yeah. That'd be a very interesting conversation. That uh, that well, Joe send him a tweet. That Joe Rogan conversation was something else for sure. It's long as hell, but it's dope. You know, if you can get it in pieces, you know, watch it over time and 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 get it in in ch- big fat chunks. It's a, mm-hmm. a really fascinating conversation for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, don't see the Snowden movie. It's terrible. It is not ah. good. It is not good. And I and I'm I'm a fan of Joseph Gordon Levitt. That movie is not good. I'm just mm-hmm. letting you know. Just pretty pretty weak sauce. Speaking of Joseph Gordon Gordon Levitt, there's a new movie out on Netflix called uh, Power Project, and it has. Um, it has um, Jamie Foxx in it and Joseph Gordon Levitt in it, mm. and uh, I'm gonna be watching it later on tonight. I'm uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it, and I'll be sure or later on today. I mean, and so I'll be sure to uh, you know give my review on the sh- the tonight show for sure because you know nice. there's a lot of people that are gonna be watching it. Um, there's there's a lot of people that are really excited about this movie, um, as am I. I'm a big Jamie Foxx uh, fan, and I'm a big J- Joseph Gordon-Levitt fan, too. I think he's really talented. Um, so I'm interested to see how they do on this uh, with this movie, if it's any good, and d- if it deserves to be on Netflix or if, it's, if it was something that we could have seen in the theaters. Right. You know, which, by the way, another thing, very, very soon, theaters are opening up. It's official. AMC movie theaters are going to be opening up here. Um, if I'm correct, they start opening up on the 21st. Uh-oh. So next Friday or something like that. Next Friday? Yeah. I haven't heard about next that Next Friday. Next Friday, they will be opened up officially. Um, they're also giving out 15-cent tickets, but this is wow. not – this is only for – this is only for old movies. So it's not going to be brand new movies where, you know, you can't go see Tenant 
uh, uh, tenant uh, for for like 15 cents. No, you're going to have to pay full price. But the movies that are coming out very, very soon, you're going to have to pay full price. But they're going to be playing other movies like The Empire Strikes Back, uh, um, Inception, just a, a lot of old movies. But you can go see those movies for 15 cents. So that's kind of exciting. But at the same time, personally, I don't know about y'all, but you will not see me inside of a theater anytime soon. Um, no, thank you. Personally, I'm just going to I'm going to keep my distance. But I understand that they're doing whatever they can to get butts in the seats and then, you know, pay for that overpriced small bag of popcorn. Let's just keep it real. Right. Three hundred dollars for a hot dog and a Coke. Get out of town. You right. know what I'm saying? It's yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, sorry, I, I have to get off. I'm sorry. I need to, uh, to j- jump off here for 10 minutes early. I'm sorry about oh, that. Oh, you got to uh, go. But, OK. Yep. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> that is but, totally, uh, totally yeah, fine. I'll, I'll touch base with you. Uh, but uh, sorry to let you wrap up here for the last couple minutes. Yeah, no worries. So, no worries, right, brother. Talk see to you guys. soon. I'll talk to everybody tomorrow. All right, man. All Peace. Right, Monday. All, All right. right. See Peace. All right. Well, Jackie gone. Jackie got to go. Understandable. Understandably. Here's some other breaking news as well. This is something that I found very interesting. Hold on. Let me hang up with Jack right quick. Bang. There we go. Some other interesting news. Woo. We're going to have to check this one out. This is um, not some not great news for. Uh, hold on, let me pull this up. Well, one, one of the things that I wanted to uh, chop it up with you guys, this is something that uh, really, really sucks. Um, and it's still terrible. And we talked about it before, uh, in one of my pop-up videos, Canon Hinnant, uh, the five-year-old, uh, that was fatally shot while riding his bike. Uh, there, his funeral is being held today. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I said, the, the, in the, in the pop-up video, this, this was the, um, story about the little kid, five-year-old kid that went to, was riding his bike in front of his uh, on his front lawn with with his seven and eight year old sister riding his bike. He rolled up um, to his next door neighbor, who his his name is Darius Sessoms. Um, D- Darius pulls out his gun and shoots this poor kid at point blank range in the head, killing Cannon in front of his seven and eight year old sisters and uh the thing is is it's terrible it's so terrible um and they are actually holding the funeral for this child for this poor child uh today right now um and this is you know of course just terrible news and one of the things that i found very interesting is that the news is now starting to talk about it the media is now starting to talk about it but they didn't talk about it before they didn't talk about this at all they just kind of let it be what it is and uh and they kind of swept it under the rug and i think one of the one of the reasons is because here it is i mean it was a a five-year-old white child and the shooter the murderer the man who shot this poor child was black or is black he's not dead they they uh arrested him he is being charged with first degree murder in the death of canon hinnant but they just kind of through they just kind of threw this story out out of the way they just kind of threw it in the corner i don't know why they did that um which is bs but i think that they were i I feel like there's a certain agenda in the media and that went against the the agenda so you know we talked about it live we talked or i talked about it on a pop-up show on a pop-up video because i i found it to be very interesting and i found it to be very important to see that there are there's still ugly things that go on on the opposite side of the spectrum you know that is not just white on black crime where you know or 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 uh uh, police or blue on black crime there are other heinous and grisly acts that are going on and violent acts that are still going on and this one just really kind of hit me and 
and and just and just tore me uh, to the core because it just is such a terrible, terrible story. Um, now I know, uh, yeah, T- Tyrannus, what's up, man? Good, good, good morning. I know that it was uh, in uh, the the local news. I know that it was on local news for sure. But as far as like the bigger news uh, media junkets out there, it just was kind of swept under the rug. You know, and it doesn't, and of course, you know, at the end of it, it's just a terrible story and it should have been ca- covered. And one of the things that I believe is that they should have told this story. And this guy is terrible. The man who shot him doesn't matter what the race doesn't matter the race. If it was a white guy who shot this child and, and the child was still white, we'd still be talking about it too. But these are the stories that need to be heard because that is some crazy stuff, especially on top of the ta- on top of everything. The fact that they were good friends or the, the father and the, the um, next door neighbor, Darius, Darius and the father were good friends. Like they were cool. They were chill. And then all of a sudden the very next day or two days later after they have had, they broke bread together. He is shooting this poor kid in the head doesn't make any sense to me. And I agree, June 12th, the act is demonic. It is insane. But it, that is something that needs to be talked about and seen and heard and shown. And yes, even so, if this was a, if Darius was still black and the kid was black, I'd still be talking about it. For sure. For sure. So, anyway. It's just a a really, really sad story. Really, really sad story. But here's another piece of information that I found very interesting. And it's unfortunate as well. And we're going to talk about it here. Let me just pull this thing up. Trump's brother has been hospitalized in New York. So Robert Trump, the younger brother of President Donald Trump, has been hospitalized in New York. Um, This is a development that has been confirmed by the White House. The details of his condition remain unknown, though he is described by several, uh, several sources as very ill. So White House Press Secretary McEnany, McEnany, I don't even know how to pronounce her last name, confirmed the hospitalization to ABC News, adding that the president and his brother have a very good relationship and that the president would be providing more details later. I got a little bit of a video, so we're going to uh, check this out. A few moments ago, I hosted a very special call with two friends, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed of the United Arab Emirates, where they agreed to finalize a historical peace agreement. Everybody said this would be impossible. And as you know, Mohammed is one of the great leaders of the Middle East. After 49 years, Israel and the United Arab Emirates will fully normalize their diplomatic relations. They will exchange embassies and ambassadors and begin cooperation across the board and on a broad range of areas, including tourism, education, health care, trade, and security. America's closest, not surprising, knowing Mohammed's right. very special place. I want to thank okay. the leaders of... That is not at all what... I thought there was a video, like an actual, actual video. Sorry about that, guys. But in June, Robert uh, Robert Trump was uh, hospitalized in in the intensive care unit at uh, Mount Sinai Hospital in New York uh, for more than one week. Robert Trump has uh, was most recently in the news after he held a lawsuit or after after he led a lawsuit on behalf of the Trump family seeking to stop publication on a tell all book by the president's niece, Mary, titled Too Much and Never Enough. So, um, 
we don't have anything else. Apparently, this is a developing story in regards to uh, Robert Trump and uh, and him being sick. I have a feeling. I kind of think it could be COVID. I think it could be COVID. That's my personal particular. Uh, that's my assumption. That's my theory. Um, I think it most definitely could be just COVID-19 and they might be sweeping it under, under the rug or trying to, you know, save face and try to hide it or something like that. But honestly, um, that is very interesting stuff. Um, and I hope he's OK. Doesn't matter what anybody thinks and how everybody how what where you where you sit on the political pe spectrum in regards to if you even like Trump or not, if you think he's evil or you think he's the best thing ever since sliced bread, it sucks when you have somebody, you know, that one of your loved ones, one of your family members sick. So I, I you know, I hope that uh, Robert, Tr Robert Trump has a speedy recovery, or I hope that as the, um, as time goes on, we get more information about how or about why he's sick and uh, how long he, he would be in, um, in the hospital for. So, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers go to him for sure. But anyway, fellas, my people, you know what I mean? Um, we got to get going. It is the, yes, Mr. T12, I agree. It would be hilarious, not hilarious, but it would be hella ironic if it is uh, COVID for sure, you know, or if it's like he was hospitalized in, in June for something, you know, in the in the intensive care unit for something in June and then for him to come back again it could be a multitude of things it could be covid it could be a second round of covid maybe i mean the 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 possibilities are endless right so all i can say is i hope that he um has a speedy recovery and i hope that he's going to be okay um it doesn't matter. It's it sucks when you have somebody that you love in the hospital. You never want somebody to be sick like that. Um, but and that was some other information in regards to that that lot that video. Um, he's apparently Trump is doing something in regards to finding peace in Israel, which uh, trying to put together a peace agreement in in Israel, which is going to be very interesting as well. So we're gonna. Of course, uh, I'm going to look into that as well so that we can talk about that tonight because um, that's also new and interesting information as well. But anyway, um, I have got to get going, but I will be on tonight at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, a little bit of a late night with Pascal type of segment. Um, so be sure to tune in we'll be talking we'll be chopping it up there's a lot to talk about there's a lot going on as we all already know um and it continues the the saga continues but um i appreciate everybody coming in tanu vein thank you so much for the phone call enemy nation thank you so much for the phone call and all of that goodness if you haven't done it yet hit that like button down below i would really really appreciate it if you haven't done that yet i'll be on tonight later on Uh -huh. I'm done, enemy nation. I am done. I'm reading the the he's he's reading he literally wrote out the lyrics to my my parody song um that I just put out just recently. Oh my god, got an addiction for getting outside my crib, but I'm stuck inside. What's life? This because this ain't it. Same old spot on the couch where I'm sitting. Yep, it is terrible. Um, but. Here it is. We will be back on. I will be back on later on tonight, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. So tune in, be a part of the discussion, be a part of the chaos and all that. Anyway, I appreciate all you guys. The posse is growing. The posse is getting bigger. And I love that. And I think it's really great because I love having more people on this show chopping it up with me. Um, I also have some cool, a cool announcement, which I'll talk about later on tonight, which should be exciting. It has to do with something outside of this show, but I, I think it's going to be really cool because I'm going to hopefully incorporate it within the show as well. But anyway, it's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. I'll see you guys tonight at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. This is the Pascal Show. Oh, Mr. T12, 
Hail to the no. No engagements. Hail to the no. Nope, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But we can all be hopeful. No, something completely different. But I'll see you guys then. I'll see you guys tonight at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. This is the Pascal Show. Bye. Engagement. Really, guys? <laughs> Bye. Ms. Feinberg, I'd really appreciate it if you would close your legs. Do you find it distracting? Power, respect. The best of us guys in the streets. Deception, the fakers, the leaks. Entertainers are trucking for tweakers and losing their circles. They're nothing unique. All of us under surveillance. There was a feeling that made it. Half of us stumbling the road and they faded. They live in the world that's degraded for people that's constantly hated. But you see how he makes these S's in his body right here? That's where he's hanging on and then he's moving forward with the locomotion of his ribs. That is classic Missouri rat snake right there. I mean, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab him before he uh, gets into a hole. Now these snakes are not biters. They won't bite as long as you don't squeeze them. If you just stop them like this, it'll freeze them. And then you just gently pull them back. As long as you don't squeeze them, they won't bite. Yo, Mike, what's, what's up, man? Guy? Good to see you, man. Yeah, so sugar fire. Yeah. Fully open, right? Yeah, we're pretty much open. Um, awesome. You can't sit inside yet. Monday, you can sit inside a little bit. We'll have 25% of the tables inside, and then we're letting it rip outside. So I know that there's a lot of people who are really concerned about uh, staying safe and yeah. all that. No, so I don't what are you guys that. doing in regards to that? Well, um, and we have extra people to clean and rub everything down all the time. Everybody inside is wearing masks. And we have those little stickers on the ground so everyone can stay six feet apart. Right on. The tables are all spaced out inside and outside. Sugar Fire, open in full effect right now. They're staying healthy, they're staying clean. Go get you a rack of ribs. Sugar Fire, open right now. Thanks. The Fur and Leather Center, providing the highest of fur and leather goods.